What do you think of your Steelers season, man? I mean, they were <sighs> they were they were better than anybody expected or could expect. Well, absolutely, that's coaching up. He's I, I think without a doubt. I think I think uh, maybe the last couple of years, maybe he was losing control of the team in some respects. Right, right. And I think this was a great opportunity to remind us why he is the coach for the Steelers. He's the right coach for the Steelers. He's amazing, right? You could say uh, this is Mike Tomlin's best coaching ever. Oh, I'm for surprised the team. he didn't he didn't get coach of the year. I think he should it's, have been up for the it. The only thing is that he, being eight and eight, it's just okay. That you can't really reward that. To, I understand. It's tough to give a but. To say you were eight and eight and you should have been five and eleven easily. I know easily, and you know what? I appreciate Pittsburgh fans uh, embracing the rotating quarterbacks, trying to make them, you know, trying to put them on their shoulders. I loved watching uh, Minka Fitzpatrick. That was a great deal. Mm -hmm. I know on draft day, of course, we're going to go like, oh, number five should have been ours. But no, I think uh, for the long term, I like that he's there. No, I mean he he's exactly the type of guy that you go against type and give up a first round draft choice in the future draft with the Steelers never do twice and just showed you that they knew they had to hit this defense and get it shored up better to get uh to where they want to go yeah. by for the first time in the Super Bowl draft era trading up 10 spots in the first round to get Devin Bush and then three weeks into the season because the fire sale was on in South Florida <laughs> go and flip a first in the future year which they never do for Fitzpatrick and no. you could see what those two guys two kids did in that second and third part you know levels of the defense how they were able to oh, work it, with TJ Watt and go hunt saves it saves the season it sets a it sets the the mold for the next five to ten years to come mm -hmm. it's gonna be uh, I I'm, I'm hopeful and also you know depending on how Big Ben is on his return, right. you know, uh, clearly we're no, we're in the last quarter of the of our our Big Ben time. So eyeing the future, I mean, mm -hmm. we're going to need a, Q, a QB at some point. I know. I don't know if I don't know if the duck is is the man. Duck or Mason Rudolph too. You know what? I, and I like them both, and I thought they both were, did as well as they could in a moment that they certainly didn't expect. Mm -hmm. I don't think you know you you ever really think that Ben's going to go down and you're going to come in like that, but. Uh, you know, other defenses got their number pretty quick. Well, I know. Patrick Fabian of Better Call Saul here on the Rich Eisen Show. Look, if I had told you, okay, the first Brown Bellless season would also be Big Benless from the middle of the second game on. Wow. And you would get Mason Rudolph out there, and he would not be ready for prime time and would get injured to the point Duck Hodges would get out there. Duck Hodges. And you'd still be 8-8. Eight and eight. Now, that's that a bet. That that's, that's whoever took that bet was really smart, right? No.